Hello everyone, just to let you all know, if you want to listen to this full episode of the official Celtic FC podcast with Paul Lambert, you can get it wherever you get your podcasts. This is the official Celtic FC podcast. Talk, talk us through that initially, you know, Martin coming in, could you sense that things were were, were on the up as soon as he came in, as soon as yeah. he came in the building? We, we needed somebody like him. This club needed some that Martin O'Neill. We, we we had obviously Joseph, then then John he came in, and then they were talking about Gus Hendrick coming. Whether Gus Hendrick was was mm. going to come, nobody knows. But we needed somebody like Martin O'Neill who knew knew obviously been so successful with Leicester and coming up here and and knowing the British game, and we needed that that kick in the backside. I think for your manager that would take no crap really from anybody and we needed somebody like him and he came in and and he, he went, went in pre-season and we get, we get cuffed a few times with no, <coughs> no no great teams and he, he gave you pre-season a little bit so you, you know that um, you're going to have to be bang at it here mm -hmm. wonder this guy and, and he in his first meeting you knew right away that that you had to perform here, yeah. or else you weren't going to play here. That that was the gaffer's mantra of it, and he kept he kept the good players here, get rid of the ones he didn't think could do it, and bring in ones to help, and it just all fitted. But forget the ability, Everton. It, it was a, it was a character. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. How, how good are the guys were as people, as people and as men, and took no took no nonsense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that that's the secret of it. You look at that the team. <clears throat> That you've played in. So if you look at the middle of the park, yourself, Neil Lennon, Stylian Petrov, that's three guys that want to win straight there, isn't it? You look up front, Henrik Larson, Chris Sutton, John Hartson, you've got Alan Thompson, you've got all the guys in defence. That is a team of winners who are going to do anything that they can to win a game of football. Yeah, and, and yeah, yeah, I like that to to Baldi mm -hmm. and yeah, Boydie. Because Boydie yeah, was here yeah. when, when Martin first I'm, came I'm, I'm probably missing so many players. Uh, yeah, yeah, so when you look at it, Didi Agat. Yeah. That, I mean, Didi Agat would cost 25000 from. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, and, and couldn't kick the ball with his left foot. <laughs> which, was, which was staggering, but he was absolutely brilliant everywhere else. <laughs> Try and catch him, eh? Exactly, he was like, he was like road runner. Yeah. And then uh, you think, Jesus. And uh, it just all fitted. We had ability, number one. Okay, we were the ability. But number two, we with that fire in the mm -hmm. stomach that you need to have from it, and 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 a manager that that had the same drive that you wanted to do well for, and he had a great backroom staff and Robbo, eh, and and Wally who all fitted in great with it. And people talk about it, Martin and you. I could count in one hand in five years how many times he went off his head with us. Mm -hmm. Probably counting two fingers. Really. He never. Because we always win. I'd love to know his record right enough here in five years, how many games he won and, and how many losses he had. But Champions League games, we never, I don't think we lost here. No. All we needed was one point away from home. And if he got that at UV, when Amoruso takes a dive, we'd have went through. But nine points can take you easily through now. No. Whereas sometimes six or seven can easily take you through. But in our time, it was, it, was, it was tough to get through nine. So you're looking at ten points to try and get you through. And I imagine as well, Paul, that you're saying you can count in one hand how many times yeah. Martin O'Neill had a go at you because I imagine if you did have a poor game, that dressing room is probably sorting itself out. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. Yeah, too too many big characters in, in there. That, too many winners, really. Yeah. That, did you ever see it kicking off, though, between oh, players aye, in there? Oh, aye, yeah. Seen a belter there fight that would probably <laughs> shame uh, you second. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 aye, to shame. Aye, I've seen... Aye, I've seen uh, I've seen a few in there. Uh, who was the one that's in your your head? Oh, the best the best one I'd seen was uh, was Bobo <laughs> was Bobo was Bobo and, of course. and, uh, and Bobo took on the whole dressing room himself I think <laughs> and won and uh, Bobo had uh, a few of the lads pinned up <laughs> three of them I basically with two hands Bobo had three of them pinned up and uh, I've never seen a juggernaut in a dressing room <laughs> I saw it that day and uh, would even you hide from Bobo? Did what? Would even you, yourself, would you hide from Bobo if he was in that do, rage? Do you know what, Ryan? You talk about respect, right? When Bobo first came, he, um, the old dressing room, I don't know if you last member, but the old dressing room, Bobo, we'll forget to change the... Um, 
uh, near me. First, I had I had Donnelly McNamara beside me, and they two a couple of bam pots here too. <laughs> and then I had, uh, and then they left, and uh, or Simon left, and then uh, Bobo came in. But he came in with a sore knee, you know. He came in with a wee bit of a problem with his knee. And it, but Martin would wheel him out, and he would play brilliant. He would come in after the game, say, oh, Paul, say, my knee, my knee. I would say, Bobo, one more game, give us one more game. I'd done that for about 40 odd games. <laughs> give us one more game. But I, oh, he had a lot of respect for me, I think, just because of what had happened before. Mm-hmm. And uh, but I seen him losing it. But I tell you what I would say about Bobo. Without Balde and Bo Vista, Huh. That night, I don't think we'd have qualified. I know Henry gets a goal, but Baldy that night in the semi final was was um he could have threw anything in that box. He was heading it, mm-hmm. and he was a brilliant, lovely big guy. And the people talk about him being limited, might have been such where the ball. But I'll tell you what, to have him at your back, hundred percent, you would take him all day long. It's a <laughs> superb team, just littered with so much talent. Yeah, you obviously mentioned the guy there. We're going, we can be talking about that team in that era without bringing them up. So, Henrik, yeah. you obviously joined Celtic in that season in the, the late 90s we were speaking about, between Henrik's first season as well. So, you you were here for his, his entire yeah. career. Did you know right away that this guy was was going to be top quality or did you see that progression through the years? I didn't know who he was, Henrik. I, I just came. I was, I was playing. All, all the guys I really knew here was uh, the Scottish lads playing from the national team. Mm-hmm. Big Mark Reaper and people like that. I didn't really know um, Stubbsy. I didn't really know. So there's a lot of lads. I knew Craig, mm-hmm. Craig Bully, Simon, Jackie, Phil, um, Boydie, Tosh, Dan Jackson. I knew, I knew the Scottish lads, but the, the foreign lads and that I never really, really knew. And um, once I started finding my feet, I knew Reggie. Reg, Reggie was obviously Reggie Blanket was a good player, good footballer. Yeah. And I knew Henrik little bits, and I, I kind of had an understanding when we won the field that there was a lot of respect there. And what I did find was, if I was ever a one in one chance, he would score <laughs> nine times out of ten. Yeah, I always thought he would, he would get as a goal. But ironically enough, I thought he'd get better after he broke his leg. Yeah. Because I thought he could jump higher and I thought he could he, he looked stronger. But his movement, people talk about Henry's goal scoring and, and all the things like that. But I'll go back to it. You ask any that played with him, the work rate. The work rate. The work rate outweighed everything for me. Yeah. You talk about high pressing, all this new word, high pressing. He was doing that. He was doing that. What, what was he like in training? But they, exactly. they, they bring that intensity yeah. We trained the same way we played. So they're, they're, they're your value of it. Mm-hmm. How did we play? You guys watched us, or you watched us, uh, uh, and how we played. Mm-hmm. And, and if I said to you, how did the 2000 era play? You'd probably say, oh, Steve Rolled Everton. It was the exact same in training. Yeah. Exact same. The only one who might have had a wee kind of jaw up would have been Louisville because he was that good. <laughs> so, uh, and he could play anywhere. He could play anywhere he wanted. So, but when it came to training, that's why they were as good as what they were because they trained the way they played. They, they took no nonsense for yeah. each other. And, you didn't want to lose in training either, and that that transfer, uh, transformed from there to, to here. Am I right in saying that you and Henrik had a sort of rivalry over the pool table? Oh, aye. Oh, uh, every morning. Every morning. Oh, terrible. <coughs> well, it, got, it, got, it, got, it got to the stage where the language was horrendous. And because uh, <laughs> uh, uh, whoever lost used to make coffee, and I hated making. <laughs> and I hate, hated that, and and so did he. And whoever won, <clears throat> or whoever won. The other one had to go and make coffee. Aye, yeah. uh, and uh, we Angie's room was obviously the laundry, and the and the if Henry got to the door, I'd one. I'd, I would I'd wait till he got to the door. You know, I say, Henry, one sugar, please. Will you? <laughs> and all you hear was, <laughs> and, and then he done it. He, he would shout to me, "Paul, this one sugar." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we became really close, and the I was still talk nowadays, and. Uh-huh. Uh, which is lovely because you tend to find foreign guys go back to yeah. their own countries and, and you do your own thing and things like that and get caught up in things, but it's still nice to uh, speak. But yeah. you're talking about goal scoring? Nah, mm-hmm. nah, listen. Out of this world. Yeah, you've you done it in Spain, you've done it in, uh, in Manchester, yep. you've done it here. 
he's done it every. Uh, that's how he judge somebody going mm. to down different countries. They really handle different countries. Then. Yeah. Did he make a good coffee? But that's the question. Ah, he did sometimes. <laughs> no, listen. Sometimes they were they were rotten. <laughs> I, I don't know if he's done that in part. Ah, you found something in it. Was, uh, <laughs> but I, actually, he, he could. Uh, he was probably one striker. I thought one v, one situation. Yeah. He would score. Yeah. yeah. He would score. Well, Paul, we've not got too much time left, um, and I, but I feel like we've got a kind of fun thing we want to finish on with yeah. you, but I feel like we can't not touch on the UEFA Cup final season, yeah. that, that run to UEFA Cup final, which You're was You're saying just... that was fun? Is this your fun part? <laughs> well, no, this isn't the fun oh, part, no, this yeah, isn't the fun yeah. part, we've got another bit afterwards, but um, I suppose that's the thing with that season, yeah. so many highs and lows, 20 years ago, 2003, mm. so many highs and lows, mainly highs on the way up there. And then just that pain and that agony of the final where you captain Celtic and Seville. Yeah. Is it is it weird to look back in your memories of that season because you must have so many great ones, but also it accumulates in that yeah. defeat? Do you know it's funny, Ryan? I've never watched the Champions League final in full, and I've never watched the FA Cup final at all. I don't think because we lost that. And it's the biggest regret I've got in football is, is no one in that because that. Would we, would that era, would that team have been classified as probably as close to the Lions? Probably, yeah, because yeah. it's won a European title. Yeah. Because we fell short, I still say we're, we're one of the best Celtic teams in a number of years, that, that team that we played in. And that's no disrespect to any other. Everybody's got their own opinion of it. But I played in an era where that was that was a strong Celtic team. Could it handle anywhere? Yeah, could it handle playing down in England? Without a shadow of a doubt. You showed it, yeah. Right. Twitched, yeah didn't without it, a yeah. shadow of a doubt. And that was over four games. Yeah. So yeah. It, no no worries whatsoever that team handling anywhere. Uh, the biggest thing is losing the UFA Cup final. Did we lose against a great portal team? When you look back on it, yeah, it was. It won the Champions League the year after. Oh. It had a manager that was coming through, became one of the greats in Josie. And people can talk about them play acting and all that. Well, I'll tell you what. I wish we were in 3-2 because we'd have done the exact same mm. and rolled about and ran 40 yards behind the goal to get the ball and mm. things like that. They'd, they'd, done, they'd done the job on us and we were only just quite... We just never hit the level for a final to, to have won it and it just fell short and that's the, the disappointment. The run, yeah, was brilliant. 